people like to mock the craziness of JavaScript frameworks, but let's be honest, the server isn't any better. For the past 15 years, there is this back and forth between the monolith and microservices architectures. We all know at least one project where the backend was over-engineered to the point where deploying a basic app for 50 clients that are not even paying for your product felt like launching a space shuttle. But there might be a better way. It's called a self-contained system and, unlike most trendy architecture terms thrown around a lot these days, this one might actually solve your problems. Let me explain. Microservices were supposed to save us from monolithic hell. Instead, they gave us a distributed hell with a lot of diagrams. The idea sounds great on paper. Instead of a single slow monolith, which was pretty much a single point of failure, you can split your system into tiny, independent services that can be deployed separately, scaled individually, and worked on by autonomous teams. But in practice, only products that have scalability issues and deployment constraints require this added layer of complexity. So once all senior backend developers and self-proclaimed system architects realize they are not working for Netflix and their enterprise software runs in a government building where they barely have access to the internet, the industry started backpedaling to the simplicity of the monolith. But if we are honest, microservices didn't fail because the idea was bad, they failed because of the execution. Teams made things too small and even coined terms like nanoservices. Everyone talked about scalability, but 90% of systems didn't need it. And in general, people started to associate the idea of monolith with legacy bad software. But the problem was that most of the time, they weren't dealing with a clean monolith, they were dealing with a big ball of mud. And guess what? That mud doesn't magically disappear just because you split it into HTTP calls. You still have the same mud, but now it is distributed all over the place. But the good news is that self-contained systems are a response to all this mess. The idea is really simple. Instead of breaking everything into microservices and pretending you're solving modularity, you build independent vertical slices. So each system includes its own UI, its own backend logic, its own database, and crucially, no runtime dependencies on other systems. Think of them like independent apps, not tightly coupled services that pretend to be modular. The magic of SCS isn't in the tech, it's in the boundaries. So you don't need circuit breakers, because your systems don't call each other, you don't need distributed tracing, because there's no distributed logic to trace, you don't need six layers of DevOps, because you're not deploying 50 services every Friday, and because the system includes its own UI, you don't get the classic anti-pattern of a monolithic front-end talking to a hundred tiny APIs. But let's address the real elephant in the room. Holy shit, is that a f***ing elephant? How do these systems exchange data? Well, the rule of thumb is that communication should be kept at a minimum since these are, after all, self-contained systems. But when they need to talk, they do it either through links in the UI or via asynchronous decoupled event-based messaging. If this sounds a lot like old-school modular applications from the 90s, that's because it is. But the structure really makes sense. Teams are small and autonomous, boundaries are business aligned, and unlike microservices, this doesn't collapse under the weight of maintainability and useless complexity. Self-contained systems were recently discussed at the Spring I.O. 2025 conference, and we actually got people sharing success stories with this architecture. SCS were used to split an old ERP system into self-contained systems. They used event replication for data sharing, each team owned their slice end-to-end, -end, UI, backend and storage were kept together, and it all fit nicely in the end. Of course, the model is not perfect, but it's cleaner and scalable in the right way. So the bottom line is this. If you're building a real-time trading platform with thousands of concurrent users, go wild with microservices. But if you're building business apps, internal tools, or systems that don't need hyperscale, maybe you don't need distributed complexity just to feel modern. If you liked this breakdown, you might find some of these videos interesting as well. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and until next time, thanks for watching.